The Canadian Immigration Minister announced its selection method as it relates to express entry in 2023. Basically, okay. what the category based selection method is, is the fact that they've picked out some certain NOC codes that the Canadian government feels like they would need those people to come to Canada to meet the economic needs of Canada agriculture like agri and agri food nurses are there pharmacy assistants are there butchers carpenters plumbers they are there so wow. those i'm telling you those category of people would be single-handedly picked because their nocs are specific to what the canadian government needs guys welcome back to my channel it's your beautiful baby girl kenzie oh if you're new to this channel you're welcome the channel is all about relocation tips life abroad and faith and if you're a returning subscriber thank you for always watching my video this love is just too much you guys are the best so as you can see from the title of this video i have a special guest <laughs> and she's going to be walking us through how you can migrate to Canada via the express entry route in 2023. Guys, you must watch this video to the very end because she's filled with a lot of knowledge and you're going to get value at the end of the video. You're welcome, my guest. Thank you for coming to the channel. Can we meet you, please? Thank you so much for having me today. <laughs> and um, hi, guys. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Sulea. I'm a Nigerian YouTuber residing in Ontario, Canada. Um, I'm a lawyer by background and I'm a mom. Um, my YouTube channel as well is based on um, lifestyle, daily vlogs, and also immigration to Canada. Um, so um, I think that's just in brief all about me. <laughs> All right, you're welcome. Thank you very much. So she also has a YouTube channel. I'm going to be putting the link in the description box. I know you were in the United Kingdom before you yeah. migrated to Canada. Mm -hmm. So are you happy in Canada? <laughs> <laughs> like I always tell people when they ask me this question, um, wherever you move to, as long as you find fulfillment, that is mm -hmm. the most important thing. I love it here in Canada because it has always been my, you know, my dream to come to Canada. And as I said, here it feels like home for me because this is where all my siblings are. And you know, sometimes if you do not move closer to your goal, you feel like there's still something missing. Yes, UK was great. It was nice. I loved living in the UK, <laughs> but I feel like I love it more here in Canada. Hmm. Okay, guys, don't worry. This video is not about comparing UK and Canada. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do that later, maybe in another video. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. I'm glad you're happy where you are. You know, it's about getting fulfillment and joy wherever you find yourself, okay? Now, let's get straight into the video. Now, can you walk us through how one can migrate to Canada via the express entry? Or first and foremost, what is express entry and what are the criteria, the eligibility criteria to migrate to Canada via these routes? All right. So, um, I would say that I would try to break each and every one into like sections so that at least you follow and you know, okay, okay, I have a question in mind. What, what does this mean? And all of that. I will start with what express entry is basically, and then I'll move on from there. So express entry is just a single program out of the various programs of immigrating legally to canada and permanently i must include and when did this start it started in 2015 when you know the canadian government felt like what can we do you know to just harmonize a way for illegible immigrants to come into canada you know and also add value to canada so they found a way and found a system an electronic system that harmonized a process through okay. which people that are eligible, people that are, you know, that meet up to certain criteria, they found a way and they, you know, they just started express entry. Under the express entry program, we have three programs, mm -hmm. one of which is the Federal Skilled Worker, which is the FSW. We have the Federal Skilled Trades, which includes certain particular trades. And finally, we have the Canadian Experience Class. So I would say that Express Entry is just the name of a program. 
underneath it we have those three categories where candidates will go into look into each and every one do i qualify for fsw is it fst or if it's is it canadian experience class then once you see fit that you meet up to those criteria then the next thing is where do i start from so okay. i relocated to canada under the fsw which is the federal skilled worker a lot of the canadian um, nigerian students in canada now under the student's route, the best pathway for them to relocate is through the Canadian Experience class. Because they've studied in Canada, some of them also now have a work experience in Canada. So they can fit under the Canadian Experience class. So coming back to the FSW, which is the one most of us in Nigeria qualify for. Next in them becomes what are the eligibility, what are the criteria, the selection factor for, you know, for FSW. The first thing is you must have um, a language test, which is what you call either IELTS or the TEF. So if you have the I IELTS, that means you are very prolific in um, English. You can, you know, you have a great band score in English. And if you have the TEF, that means you are very prolific in French. French. And you try to do both. It does not, you know, it doesn't stop you. It adds more to your score. The next thing is your evaluation. So express entry is not just for everyone. I'm going to bring this here. If you have a secondary school degree, if you did not go to school, express entry, unfortunately, is not the pathway that you can come in through. Like I said, there are several other pathways. You can try the PMP, you can try the AIP. There's so many of them, but in particular to relocating to Canada via the express entry, it is not for people that do not have a degree because you need to be able to, you know, evaluate your degree. And if you don't have a degree, it reduces your chance in the pool. What do you oh. want to use as your evaluation? Nothing. Yeah. So if you have a degree, you can, you know, contact some bodies depending on the course you did in school. So, for example, if you are a professional, if you did a professional course in school, say some professional courses like law, um, law pharmacy, medicine, and you know, just to mention a few, there are bodies that evaluate your results and those bodies, in evaluating the results, they give you a professional degree. So at the end of the day, what you are evaluated as is a professional degree. If you do not have a professional or if you did not do a professional course in school, you then need to use just the regular body, say West, for example, which is the most popular one. You use West and you get your evaluation they either just evaluate you as a four-year program or mm -hmm. if you have an ND, an HND program before you did your BSc, then they evaluate you as a two or more degree. Those so you are have more points for that. Yes, you have more points. So I used to okay. tell people when someone tells me that, oh, my husband has an HND, I'm like, and so? An HND holder is even rated more than you that you are carrying bsc because yes, at wow. the end of the day they, they evaluate them as two or more degree while they evaluate you with a bsc as just a four-year program so wow. you can imagine so those are the first two steps in getting your leg into express entry fsw program regardless okay. of whatever program you settle for evaluation and IELTS are the first two things because that's what would take you into creating an express entry profile. So how does the um, express entry actually work? The Canadian government will take a look at all the candidates that have created their express entry profile. Mm -hmm. They look at the top ranking candidates. So if you've maxed out your IELTS, if you have a master's degree or you have a two or more degree, or you have a BSc. They take a look at the highest top ranking candidate and they mm -hmm. draw people out. So there are three stages to express entry pre ITA stage. The second stage is the ITA stage, which is when you are drawn out of the pool, you are given a chance to move on to the next round. The third stage, which is the post ITA stage, is when you now submit all the documents that you say you have. Then finally, AOR stage, which is 
you've submitted and you are waiting patiently for your PPR. Just to deviate, you know that if you do not add your spouse in inspection of your IELTS, you get PPR and then you decide to add your spouse, your spouse would never, you will never be able to sponsor your spouse if you don't oh. do that. So a lot of people think that they can remove their spouse when they are doing, you know, filling all this information at the beginning, thinking that when they get PPR, they will add their spouse back. You would never be able to sponsor your spouse to Canada. Your spouse would now have to find a different way to move to Canada by Canada. themselves because you did not declare that. Let me just go back to pre-ITA stage. What are the things that you must have before, you know, you can, I say that you can be moved to the next stage. The first thing, age. Your age. second thing, if you have a spouse, they must be willing to have something, whether it's IELTS or your degree to help you. Degree. The third thing is you must have worked for three years or more. If you want to, you know, that's for you to be drawn out. If you just want to create a profile, you can have one year experience. It's the minimum. But the highest you must have is three years or more. In that because same occupation, that in that in one occupation that you are okay. feeling, I'm still going to get to the occupation stage. One unique thing about FSW, let me just go back there, is the fact that what you did in uni doesn't have to be what you are working in. You can mm. practice, you can study accounting in uni and you are working as a data analyst. FSW allows you to do that. PMP, provincial nominee, would not. Some people don't have the, the three years of work experience. Some people just have one year. What can you do to, you know, to augur the effect of that? Some people look for a job. So if you get a job, you get something they call LMIA, you necessarily don't even have to have um, the full sponsorship yet. Once you're able to get a job and you get LMIA, then you can add that as well to the details of your express entry. It boosts your points. Also, mm -hmm. some people get PMP. They get provincial nominee. You are lucky to get picked from your express entry to apply for provincial nominee. Mm -hmm. It adds 600 points to your score. Wow. Most <laughs> PMP nomination is the most, is the highest of all. You are trying to boost your CRS score and all of that. PMP would give you 600 points. The last thing that could add to your points, to you being, you know, getting to the top of being drawn from the pool is if you have a sibling that is either a citizen or a permanent resident. So, for example, I'm a permanent resident of Canada. If I have a sibling that is looking to get into the pool tomorrow, mm -hmm. all they just need to do is put my name and then I submit some documents, and then they get 15 points off me. For the purpose of express entry, siblings are siblings. No auntie, no uncle, no brother, no cousin. You could claim point, point off of your step-sibling as long as when they were filling their own permanent residence form, then they, they added you as you know, as their yeah, siblings. siblings yeah. So you could claim points off of that. So those are like the major criteria for selection factor. Age, language test, um, work experience, if you have PMP or you have a job offer. And finally, adaptability points, whether it is from spouse or it is from your sibling. So once all of that is done and they do a draw and you're certain to be picked, once you get picked, the next thing is for you to move on to the next stage, which is the post ITA stage. With the post ITA stage, quickly, you all you just need to do is submit your document and you pay your fees. You submit your passport. You submit all the degrees that you claim to have. You submit your IELTS test result. Submit your evaluation report. You submit your POF. The Canadian government releases. POF yearly for criteria for a family of one to five, I think. So you look for your family criteria or category and pick the POF and that is what you must have in your bank account. For how so, many months? So it depends. Some people will tell you they put the money, they remove it the next day. They put the money, they remove it in one month. 
But what it says on the Canadian website, it says that the money must be readily available at all times, whether it is upon landing, whether it is upon PPR, whether it is upon submission. So if you okay. put the money and you remove the money, they did not catch you or they did not ask again, you are good to go. But they are okay. constantly in the habit of asking you to provide proof of the fact that you still have the money from time money. to time. So, so how many months bank statement are you going to submit? Is it a three months? I submitted a day. I submitted a day. The a day bank I, statement. A day bank statement. The reason why I submitted a day bank statement was because there's something that I did. I did a deed gift. So oh. I stated that somebody was my mom was and not just anyone can give you a deed gift. It has to be somebody direct. So I stated yeah. that my mom was giving me full amount my mom was giving me the whole money that i needed for okay. you know and i submitted a day bank statement with a reference reference data from the bank if you are working and you want to prove from your years of working you are you can submit six months of back-to-back -back mm -hmm. statements including your savings including any other things that you you already have you also need to have your police character certificate for all countries that you've lived in. I submitted mm -hmm. a UK um, certificate because I've lived more than six months in the UK. So if you've not lived more than six months in a country, you can discard that. But if you've mm -hmm. lived six months and above, you'd need to submit your, um, you need to submit a police character mm -hmm. from all those countries that you've lived in. Then so there's something they call a medical. Sorry, did you submit from Nigeria and from yeah. UK? Yes, okay. I submitted both. I submitted both. So okay. also you would need to submit a medical report. Most of the time, Canada, you, you know, will ask you for an upfront medical, meaning they are not requesting, but you are doing it upfront. You are trying to be proactive in doing the medicals. So medical is eligible for one year. You can do your medicals. It's not just a regular hospital. They are specific and peculiar hospital that you need to do your medicals from when it comes to Canada. It's your marriage certificate and then you pay your fees. One thing that I would also advise people to do is to make sure that when you are submitting your document, know that you are putting the right documents in the right place order. I've had people cancel, have their application cancelled because they submitted passports in where they are supposed to submit police character. Nobody has time to check. Wow. I'm telling you. <laughs> it's not I'm telling you. So with Canada, it is all about precision and attention to details. You yeah. cannot just submit something and think that it is good. So some people are not financially capable to um you know pay the whole fee. Okay. You are allowed yeah. to pay your processing fee first, which is I think five hundred and something Canadian dollars, and then you mm -hmm. pay the, the other leg while on the journey. You'll be okay. asked to pay that while on the journey. And then okay. you submit. once you submit, what is left is for them to access and it's for them to, you know, grant your PR. The waiting begins. What is the time frame? When uh, are they going to give me my PPR and all of that? The thing is, with Canada, you cannot give a definite date to things. I've seen people get PPR in three months. I've seen people get in one year and I've seen people get in five years. I got oh, my yeah. yeah. <laughs> some, some, it's not the thing is some people had issue along the way. Some oh, people okay. gave birth along the way. My application was one year plus because I gave birth. Giving birth alone delayed my application for extra seven months or extra six months. Why? Because when I wanted to, when I got pregnant, I got some documents. I could not do all of those things because I had to do medicals the hospital refused blatantly because i was pregnant oh you, you deliver you come back i came back after four months after i delivered mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. i delivered i now had to go back to ircc they don't reply immediately i started sending emails i started doing stuff please i need to add my child please i've done medicals please i've done this please i've done that i did not give them a breathing space until they added my son. So there is always that delay. Some people get back to two children in this journey. <laughs> so now imagine and they need to the add journey. The <laughs> and they need to add the children because they need PR for those children as well. So yeah. all of those things, 
it depends. So one thing I just want to say is once when it comes to time frame and processing time, don't put your don't be too excited to say that this is what it is. Project your mind to submitting and hoping that it comes out quick. IRCC will tell you that it is 12 months, but it can come out before 12 months. Yeah, thank you very much. Wow, I've really, really learned a lot from this. You're then welcome. I also want to ask, you talked about the medicals, the police certificates. If you're married, do your spouse also need to go through those processes? So with it is just the primary applicant that will do all of that. Okay. So the dependents don't do much except from supporting you with IELTS and their evaluation. They are just dormant, even with the kids. <laughs> or they just need to pay this application fee. They don't do anything else. Wow. Oh, so, that's very, very interesting. So, guys, yeah. if you know you want to come to Canada via Express <laughs> Entry, she has explained everything. It's quite easy to follow the steps. Just follow the steps. Once you're, you know, picked from the pool, you just have to wait. But... You should be guaranteed. I think there should be a guarantee that you yeah, get the PPR, yeah. right? Once all your documents are sorted, once everything is in order, your PPR is coming. No one, except you've lied on your application anyway, because there's something they call info sharing with Canada. If you lie that you've never been refused the visa and they, they find out, you get a PFL. That is, you get a letter to come and explain yourself. Quickly, okay. before you round up, is also on the 1st of May, 2023, the Canadian Immigration Minister announced the selection method as it relates to express entry in 2023. Okay. Basically, what the category-based selection um, method is, is the fact that they've picked out some certain NOC codes that the Canadian government feels like they would need those people to come to Canada to meet the economic needs of Canada. The NOC codes are very specific to people that have great proficiency in French. They have people that are in healthcare, STEM, transport, um, agriculture, like agri and agri-food. Those specific occupation are now, they've not started the category based yet. We're expecting a new, the first draw in summer, probably sometimes in July or August or thereabout. Yeah. But it's an opportunity for people that are already in the pool, that even nurses <laughs> are there. Nurses are there. Nursing wow. practitioners, registered nurses, they are there. So pharmacy assistants are there. Butchers, carpenters, plumbers, they are there. So wow. those, I'm telling you, those category of people would be single-handedly picked. It's not going to be a general draw. It's going to be for a certain particular type of people. They pick mm. them from the pool and then they give them a specific draw because their NOCs are specific to what the Canadian government needs. If you've not created an express entry profile, you need to hurry and create one because who knows, you might be picked by the Canadian government. Exactly. That's very interesting. Exactly. That's, that's exactly. a good word. You know, that's one thing about Canada. They bring up policies to, you know, especially when it comes to immigration matters, they really need people in Canada. And mm -hmm. Canada is calling, they've been calling, they are calling, and they will always call immigrants to come and fill up the shortage, okay? Then I want to ask one final question before we round up. For the work experience, do you need to submit reference letter from your employer? Yes, you do. So regardless okay. of whatever you do, your work experience has to be in tandem with what the Canadian government wants. So the okay. Canadian government has IRCC as a specific modified way that your work experience has to be. So your reference letter from wherever you've worked has to be what IRCC wants. It must include your hours. It must include your job description. It must include when you started. Everything is on the IRCC's website. So you cannot just bring a letter, a random letter. And it must be letter-headed and signed by your direct boss it's not just by your colleague or something so everything is on the rcc's website all right thank you very much sulia for this informative section with you guys personally i've learned a lot especially with the new immigration or the selection category mm -hmm. so if you know you have any more question for my guest just put it in the comment section and i know she will be glad to answer your questions 
and also you can follow her on our youtube channel subscribe to our channel like her page just bombard her with your questions <laughs> and i'm sure she she's ready to accept you okay and she's a lawyer for that matter <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> thank, thank you, you so for much not <laughs> i'm supposed to pay for this section guys but you know we brought this lawyer to the channel and guys if you know you've gotten value from this video value is our watchword just smash the subscribe button like this video so that youtube can recommend it to other people and turn on your notification bell so that you will be notified whenever i drop value-based videos okay so do you have any final word before we round up? So my final word is just for people, particularly people that like to procrastinate, people that like to leave things to last minute. I would just always like to say that just do it. Even if it is afraid, do it while you think that you don't meet up because you never can tell you can get lucky. You can be picked people from humble beginnings, people that don't have much. They shy away from the fact that, how are we going to do this? But I used to say something. If it is money for IELTS, you have to be start it. If it is money for um, evaluation, you have start it somewhere. Somehow you will find yeah. yourself and you will meet yourself up in the middle. All right, guys, do not procrastinate. And also don't procrastinate in subscribing to my channel because i'm going to be bringing value to my channel i am your plug for relocation tips life abroad and faith it's kemzi all once again and i'm signing out on this channel today and i'm going to see you in my next video bye, bye.